Because I think it's important, right, that we um, involve them and they, we ask their point of view, uh, particularly when you're in the process of, uh, of change. It'd be interesting to hear, you know, like what actually um, gets in the way of learning, right, for these learners and, and to get their perspective. And, and you could frame it also as, you know, what supports your learning. It'd be interesting to kind of explore these ideas um, first with learners, I'd say. Uh, and I find, you know, the older your students are, the easier it is to do some of that metacognitive work for a while, right? And then get into um, so sort of hands-on work in ways that we can uh, think about space, right? We're making drawings um, and doing some research, uh, think about spaces that resonate with us. How do they make us feel and so on? It's a whole inquiry in itself, I would say. Um, but definitely what lies at the heart of this for me as well is is our attentiveness to the way our students are responding to the spaces that we um, create right so it is an ever sort of evolving process that needs our, our curiosity our attentiveness our alertness uh, to the ways that we see students use the space and then we can adapt it according to those observations uh, the documentation of these observations and then our interpretations of it so now I'm really speaking sort of, you know, with that earliest voice, but I think it also applies to all the students, right, that we're constantly go through this um, a cycle of observation, documentation, interpretation and planning so that we stay connected to the students and their thinking. Because um, I think it is important that we honor students' uh, voices and their thinking and their point of view with regards to space. But I think we also need to honor our expertise uh, with it as well. Yeah. You know, so it is a, it is a um, negotiated space. You know, I, I have many conversations with teachers uh, around this construct of learner agency and it is a really powerful idea and it's really, really important, but it's a, it's a, it's a space of citizenship, right? It's a negotiated space. It's where, where we work through our uh, different points of view and where we meet somewhere in the middle. Um, and we bring our expertise as, as educators, as designers of space, we know how it facilitates learning. So I think our voice is just as important as uh, the student's uh, voice. So we need mm. to kind of work and, 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 and collaborate on this, I'd say. But this idea of um, responsiveness is, is an important one to consider. So if there is a certain idea, a theory, uh, a misconception, we're stuck, what can we do? What can we add to the space that supports learners with working this through? Um, like, so that would be um, one way that I would respond to, to your question, uh, apart from um, yeah, the, this whole inquiry with students around, you know, what supports them with their learning, right? Um, and one thing to take into consideration, and I know we've talked about this idea of Pinterest pretty classrooms and, you know, the space needs to be real, but it has to be aesthetically pleasing as well. So. I think it's important you know, to talk with the students also and maybe choose a color palette, right? Something that resonates with them, but colors that go together. And I know this is just a detail, but sometimes we just make assumptions about learners, right? That they, particularly young learners, that they like primary colors. But if we walk in the world, when we go into spaces, we never come across that many yellow, blue, and red, right? <laughs> it's just, it, you know, like, Learners mm. usually process the room. So I think also we as educators together with, with the students need to be very thoughtful about um, the amount of color that we bring into the space. So, you know, I think that that's a conversation as well to have with these students mm. uh, uh, and, to be, um, and to be cognizant about. Mm. Wow, yes, I just want to say I'm connecting with everything you're saying there, Anne, and I think this... I definitely would agree that particularly for older students, this idea of co-construction of the space, literally and figuratively, again, the co-construction of the physical space, but also co-construction of what kind of emotional and intellectual space do, do we want here? Um, I think this is a super powerful inquiry, particularly early on in the year. And I think it's a really important one to do with older kids because one of the mistakes we might make is thinking, right, well, I need to give the kids a choice and voice in setting up the classroom. So I'm just going to have this empty space and say, hey, guys, how would you like to have your classroom? 
um, you know, what, what, what do you want? Now, actually, the question should be, if we are going to be in this space as productive, powerful learners, what might the space need to look like? There's a big difference between a space that we might like to hang out and have a party in and a space that will support us each day as learners, which includes support our well-being. So I would be framing the inquiry as how does, I've, in fact, I've facilitated an inquiry with grade five, six kids on the question, how does design impact our well-being? And so they, they actually study it before they then contribute their decisions. And that tends to get rid of the, I want a swimming pool and a chocolate fountain and a jukebox. And because, of course, if I said, what do you want? That's what, of course, I'd want a chocolate fountain too. But when it's like, well, hang on a second, seriously, what, what, is, what does the space need to be that might support our learning? So we do that. And it's a beautiful year-long inquiry, again, probably more with our older children, but this question that we keep, you know, we keep coming back to that thinking and say, okay, let's pause. How do you think it's working? What are you noticing? Or I'm noticing that this bit, this space here, we seem to get a lot of that's really crowded and messy and that's not really working. What do you think we might do? I remember actually seeing a beautiful moment at um, Vienna International School at the very beginning of last year where the teacher said she was just about to move the fish tank that they had. She was an um, early years teacher, maybe year one. And I've got the documentation of this because she said after we'd had the day together, she said, you know, Kath, I was just about to move that fish tank because it wasn't working. But instead, what I did is I said to the kids, here's what I'm noticing. I'm noticing that that's really crowded. I can't remember what the issue was. So her question to them was, I wonder what we might do about that. I wonder if there's a better place for it. And that question, not only did it result in a better position for the fish tank, it actually linked to talking about electricity, about what fish need to survive, about why we've even got fish in the classroom in the first place. So this lovely conversation that was recorded and the ownership then of now where have we placed it now how's that working so involving the kids maybe the and maybe another answer that I'd scribble down here is to do with um, smaller moments like that so rather than thinking all right kids design this and instead I'm thinking about one of the beautiful schools that I work in that has such a respectful and aesthetic space and actually the principal and the staff have quite a lot of say in that there's they're really thoughtful about how they curate the space but the children are often involved in in elements of it so I remember when they were choosing furniture for their new outdoor courtyard outside the grade five six room that was offered to a small group not all the children but that was offered to a small group of children to investigate with okay what criteria what's the budget what what's the color scheme we've already got except a small group did that um I, I don't know what's become of this one but we activated one with the grade threes in that school where the kids i actually noticed that every time i went in to try and talk to them the sun was blinding and there was no the positioning of the windows was problematic so they were looking at how can we get some sort of coverage for the windows because they're really high up so these little these these smaller so you go deep into small problems and challenges that teach kids the nuances of the process of how to um, improve a space for learning and living so that would be my my two things learn about the learning that's got to happen there and maybe go with the smaller pieces and I love the reminder Anne's given us all that agency doesn't mean you get to do everything you want whenever you want wherever you want with whomever you want anytime you want uh, too much choice actually doesn't make us happier it makes us anxious that we've got to uh, it's it's a negotiation and that's true of all of this. It's co-construction is co-educators and, and learners. 
So, yeah. so if you I want was- your oil burner in the space and the kids don't, bad yeah. luck, you still get to have it. <laughs> I was thinking, uh, Kath, when you're, you're making connection uh, also back to uh, Amy's question about these sort of temporary spaces, I think it is important that every space has... Um, something I don't, I'm not phrasing this very carefully but like a section of that space is dedicated to you know a place where you can make something or at least that you have mm. materials that help you with representation of your ideas mm. right so it can be a maker space but I can also imagine that it's good that all these spaces have um, allow students to have access to different ways that they can represent their thinking. So white paper mm-hmm. and black pens to have perhaps clay, Lego, um, wire, perhaps of some loose parts, you know, like, um, and so, you know, students could actually be designing that space, right? What materials help us with yeah. our thinking? You know, that could be a question in itself, but I That's think it nice. is important, you know, that students have access to materials as we build relationships with materials. They also help us with our thinking. They they really do um so mm. that would be mm-hmm. something that students could actually design right and that um yeah could be a nice part of those more temporary spaces that students know that yeah. that's always there 